so I kind of want to just speak to a couple things while this thing's rolling. So first off, um, our attitude out the gate here, absolutely phenomenal. Like Carrillo just made a super dangerous pass, but we have the trust in him to kind of let that happen, right? He does another good one, and we just keep moving the ball. Like, it, honestly, for a team as good as Sturgeon Heights is, uh, I'm going to blow your minds with a statistic in a bit, in a bit. But just, you know, hold on to it, okay? Um, the understanding here between Brennan and Carrillo, very good. The understanding between our midfielders, who I believe it's Hudson and Yannick, very good. Ryan up top, very good just staying high but being an option. Um, I believe we hit him with a really good ball in a moment here. And I just want to I want to kind of illustrate the importance of... Oh, maybe it's in a bit. We get our corner here, I believe. Okay, so... Um, I like that we are able to kind of pick and choose our moments to stay tight and play tight. The nice thing about playing as tight as we have been is that um, you can counter-press really quickly. And so for those of you that don't know what counter-pressing is, it's when you, as a team, are able to win the ball back quickly. Um, so being tight in attack helps you defensively. I would say we can risk a bit more. So like one midfielder can drift out to receive if we have the opportunity to do that. Um, I'd also like for you guys to just pay attention to their formation for a second. So they're playing the 2-1-2 two, two, and they're putting pressure high. Um, where we're going to find relief is through Hudson and Yannick wide, just in that kind of middle area. Okay, And we should look to aim to play there and turn forward. So obviously having a good pass um, highly important that goal I want to talk about it for a second uh, and this I'm going to come back to the statistic again but uh, they have not yet made a pass in the game and if you if you seriously don't believe me that was the first time you could even consider anything a pass so um, like for example like that was like a throw in it was a set piece so they should be able to get something on. Uh, they don't do that before that, and they barely do that for the next two or three minutes, actually. Um, so something to keep in mind, how absolutely dominant we are without actually winning the game at the moment. Um, so very good from Carrillo to realize Ryan should probably look to get far post, but this looks good anyways. We do a great job. This is their first technical pass, and I don't even know if I would call it that, because they don't actually, like, it's not a complete pass. It's a, it's, it's, it's out, right? Um, for throw-ins, if we're going to throw near post, throw to feet. So there, Brennan kind of goes for, I think it's Ryan's head. Don't worry about trying to get, like, header flicks over. Headers come from the far post and indoor. That's just kind of how it works. Unless you have a really low and hard delivery, that's about head height. Um, okay, so they've made a sub now. Yeah, they've made their sub. We've made most of our sub. Good job from Carrillo to... That's a great ball, phenomenal ball. But um, dangerous, right? Uh, so... If Brennan comes in underneath and kind of gets, uh, you know, between Zach and Carrillo facing forward, that's a good way to get out of that pressure, right? And Yannick would come fill for Brennan, and we'd be able to play out that way. But the realization that, oh, Carrillo's in trouble, he needs an underneath option, so an option that he can play backwards to, very important. Okay, let's see. I think... No, they don't get their first pass just yet. So we're four and a half minutes in. They don't have their first pass made yet. So, hang on, still not coming. <laughs> um, again, though, I just want to illustrate how absolutely critical it is. Okay, yeah, there it is. So they've scored two, but they've connected like three or four passes, maybe, if you could even call them that. Um, but... 
what I want to kind of for everybody to take from this is the importance of what we just saw. We're down two nothing, but we're f- f- leagues ahead of these guys in terms of how we're playing with the ball. So don't let that disappoint you. Don't let that make you sad. It simply is just the way the game works. A lot of times at our level, counterattacking wins games. It's just an unfortunate truth. Um, we're not going to play to be a counterattacking team. The varsities don't do it. I don't want them to do it. Um, the JVs aren't going to learn to do it. Uh, there, you guys also aren't physical enough to do it, which is fine. But I want to make you guys good players. It's it's why guys like Derek Bergen are, you know, and the like. Those guys are able to go and play at high levels after high school. It's simply because we don't worry about playing cheap soccer here. And I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to disparage the other team. Like I know the coach; he's a good guy. He knows what he's doing. But it is important to recognize that kind of struggling through moments like these where you're like, oh man, we're the better team, but we're down. What's going on here? It's something that is really worth understanding is that the process of how we play is in the long run far better for you as a player. Again, we're still kind of showing a lot of dominance. We're trying to the near post header again. It doesn't really work. Um, like think about like where Justin wants the ball. Justin is not the kind of player who wants to head the ball. That worked out because we got a corner out of it. But Justin wants it at his feet. And you'll see it later this game. Justin has a couple of really good moves in order to kind of free up space and beat a guy. But that's where he wants the ball, right? So thinking about, okay, I'm on a shift with Willie, Justin, let's say Brennan and Carrillo. I'm going to play to the feet because I know all of those guys have good qualities with their feet that I can kind of work with, right? If you're playing with a guy maybe like Ryan, the deliveries may be a bit different. You can deliver it a bit higher up. You can hit them longer ones, and you can kind of deal with those a bit better, right? But um, it's a, just an important understanding of, like, it's, it's the whole it's the whole thing about chemistry, right? Everybody's always like, oh, they've got good chemistry. They've got bad chemistry. What does that even mean? Well, it, it just means that players know how players want to get the ball, right? Very good from Zach here to play short. Very good from a midi to drive inside. Absolutely brilliant breakaway. Textbook. Hitting, like, driving inside and hitting a big cross fielder from a midi and then for Owen to switch it on the other side. Brilliant. Again, if we play every single possession, four, five, six, seven, eight passes, and they play one or two, we could play these guys a hundred times. And they'll beat the snot of us the first 10 games. The next 20, it'll be very, very close. And then the 70 after that, if we keep playing the way we play, it's going to be an absolute crap kicking. Okay? Um, So recognize that we are doing this for a lot of you guys. And even, you know, our grade 11s like Yannick, Brennan, and Carrillo. And Amidi. I am doing this specifically with you guys on this team so I can turn you into players that are just going to be absolutely ready to go for provincials. And for those of you that are in grade 9, I'd love to see you on the provincial team. It's tough. But again, I want to kind of get across this way of playing. Um, Actually, that reminds me. One of our biggest problems on this team is that our touch can be extremely heavy. Right? So good, keeps it nice and tight. We should probably be opening up and looking to hit uh, Marcus there from Owen. Unlucky again. That's okay. That's three in a row that are just, they're offset pieces. They're just kind of whatever is. They're unlucky. Again, I'm not worried. This is what happens when you play a possession game, right? If I said Noah or Owen, every time you get that ball before there, just smash it. You wouldn't learn anything, but they wouldn't have scored that goal. So for me, I don't care to allow those goals. It just doesn't mean anything to me that they got it. Okay, and again, we're here to learn and to get better as a team of players. So, okay, Owen does a great job being open. And then he doesn't, or is that no at this point? It might be no or no. No, it's Owen still. Um, but recognizing where the space is on the field to attack, excellent. I think Willie gets the free kick. He goes close on this next one. Um, I just want to kind of compare this. I think it was a midi who took a free kick about 
two, three minutes ago from a similar spot. Um, Amidi's delivery was, it was a cross delivery. That's a shot. Um, honestly, everything should just be shot in indoor. If you are in the opponent's half, shoot it and just have bodies running at the goalie and near the net for deflections, tap-ins, etc. Um, corners, we're doing better at taking them low. Uh, yeah. I Honestly, I think if you still look here, their team has maybe made a couple passes. Like, completed intentional foot-to-foot -foot passes. I think they're something like, they're probably, they're definitely under 10. And we will get that many in, like, two possessions. Uh, I should actually rewatch and just take the stats for that because, um, yeah, pretty critical stat. Uh, just the thing with clearances, whenever you do get the opportunity to clear, uh, defensively, it's high and away. Okay, so that one, um, like I kind of get it. The ball's coming at you, players coming at you. Kind of just like, I'm just going to kind of park it that way. Try to get it high and away, and that way we can get it out and in not so dangerous areas, right? Corners have always been the bane of our existence on this team. And, you know, come provincial season, we'll practice them. I'll get Jordy whipping in thousands at you guys this year, I'm thinking, because it's just the way it is. Um, excellent job from, I think it's at this point, Noah, to get out wider than Jackson. Um, but I think there we need to realize... Oh, I'll let you guys watch this. It's a good moment. Very good moment for Noah to fall the pass. If we go to Jackson on one side, and that's a strong side, let's just keep playing it forward. And it doesn't need to be playing to Jackson, but it also, or sorry, Jackson to Noah. Oh, by the way there, I called Jackson over um, just for a little rule clarification. So um, he'll come back, you'll see him whisper to everybody, but he's basically telling everybody that there are rebounds. So old indoor didn't have rebounds. Now, I think for the last two years, there are rebounds and we can kind of see everybody get in, a, in position a bit for it. Um, and I kind of wanted to touch on that just because it's an element of the game, right? Like, it's the kind of thing, like, if we pretend there's no rebounds and there is a rebound, keeper's going to grab it. Um, but it's it's just important to understand these things and be aware of them. So I want you guys to kind of, you know, be cognizant of that. Great job from Noah to earn the penalty. Great job from Willie putting it away. Good stuff, boys. Um, let's see. What else can I touch on here? I think I could probably stop talking for a bit and let us watch, but... Uh, yeah, let's 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 do that. Ultimately, you can kind of break every little action that happens in a soccer game, every choice you make, down to kind of a game of percentages, um, and so. Zach, earlier this game, did a really good job of just being brave, playing short, keeping it short, uh, moving the ball short, but that kind of marks a bit of a turn for us. So starting with that one, and you'll see it happen a few more times, and, and you know, it's it's important to kind of recognize these moments. Like, I, I'll speak to just specifically Zach here, but to kind of count how many times something works versus doesn't work, because in the game, you're not really keeping track of this stuff. But when you start kind of looking at Something like playing it long out the back versus playing short. Like, okay, so this worked, except, you know, I kind of mentioned at halftime being able to turn. Um, good. Check for one worked, one one short worked, one long didn't. Um, great save there. Way to get big. But, uh, so understanding kind of where your success is your successes lie is hugely important. And if you look at stats, um, really involved stats for pro players, what you'll understand is that there are some players and players kind of fit into their roles on teams based on their success rates. And if they have an abnormally high success rate doing something, then they're kind of put in a position where they can kind of take advantage of that. Okay, so some, like for a player like uh, Jorginho uh, on, um, on Arsenal, he sits back and he has an extremely good forward pass completion percentage 
Um, and actually, if you look at this last game on the weekend where they played, I believe it was Brentford, uh, he set Saka up with an absolute beauty of a ball. Um, again, just using his, what he's good at, what he gets high percentages with. Uh, so recognizing where you have high percentages of success and where you have lower percentages of, of success is very critical. And I'm not saying don't ever do your low percentage stuff because you, you need to. You need to in order to get better, right? Like if Zach only ever played short, he wouldn't be able to play long. Um, so, but it is important to be mindful of it, right? And if it's something that you really are, you know, maybe not so good at, um, you know, practicing it in the gym first or in practices first, and I know we don't have that luxury most of the time, is, is just far preferred to going into a game and then, you know, not necessarily being able to hold on to the ball. We do a lot better marking corners, although I think they might... No, I don't think they get their fourth off this one. Um, but we do a great job. Everybody's kind of making contact. Hudson's got the far post covered. Like, it's it's just much, much more difficult for them. Um, and largely, if you look at their chances, they're, they're difficult to convert. Like, that, very tough to convert. Right? Whereas, you know, we are kind of... Our status within the game right now is kind of we've got the ball out of our defense, we're building it up well, and then we're, we're lacking that little extra, right? Um, I mean, that's just kind of what it is. Great ball from Carrillo again, always looking for those cross fielders with his right foot from the left back spot. Super good. Um, we kind of need to be eager, more eager to, to shoot, but uh, I'll touch on that later when I see it a bit more, and that will kind of ultimately help our kind of expected goals go up. I just want to quickly make a note of something here. Um, Brennan gets the ball off this throw, and his first and second touch, very good. So first sets him up to move forward, maybe a little heavy. His second touch, though, to take the ball in centrally into space sets up this whole attack, and brilliant. I would love for my defenders to be able to do that as much as possible, simply because the amount of actual, you know, conversions you'll get on that, it... it you'll be shocked how many times you can completely break a defense apart. Um, again, here, so if Carrillo's touch there is a little less heavy, he's in. Um, if we look before, I think Hudson had a moment where he could have just shot. If you get the ball in a spot where you're looking, like, pretty good, just shoot it. Shoot, 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 right? Like, if you are 10, 15 yards away from the net, just play it out, Right? Like, Yannick does a good job to try for one touch there. It doesn't work out. No problem. It was good. This should be touch shot. Right? Like, sometimes you can't shoot off first touch, but try to do it when you can. Sometimes it is just little technical things that actually are undoing. Ryan needs to think percentages there. Like, it would look gorgeous if he chips the keeper over his own shoulder. But again, like, what's the likelihood, right? Again, though, we're still very dominant. We're doing good things with and without the ball. We're forcing them into low percentage stuff. And you guys might not even necessarily know that, but that's fine. We look good. Like, just look good. Mm -hmm. 
one thing worth noting is that pretty much every shot or every free kick in indoor is a shot. So there, it ended up being a shot. Um, and you can actually use that to your advantage, okay? So if you're on the field and, and you see they have a free kick like that, and you know it's pretty much going to be a shot, say it, right? And saying it out loud will actually either potentially get in the other player's head or it'll actually uh, force him to change. So I did this once at one of my own games uh, just recently. I just said, yeah, it's a, this is a shot. This is a shot. Um, calling it out as it was kind of right before it was happening. And the guy, like, fluffed this weird half pass, uh, didn't go to anybody. He tried to, like, center it across, like, across the 18 as opposed to kind of just driving it at the goal. And um, when you do that, you can kind of afford to com commit less um, in terms of, you know, your wall for one like if you if you're gonna do two or three if it's in a spot where you don't really know if you're able to put three in a wall or able to put two instead of three it's a huge difference i mean one to two not so much a difference because that's just your forward coming back um but uh putting three in a wall and indoor sometimes is very necessary it just doesn't work out excellent job getting your bodies in front of us it's amazing uh again like just passing kind of strength, right? Like it's either too soft or too hard sometimes. Um, also for that, Zach, if you can parry it away like to the outside or, you know, punching it even, like a two-fisted punch for the ball, that sometimes works well too. Um, yeah, just generally like little technical things and, and our game will clean up quite a lot nicer. So it might feel far, but that's a, a moment where you need to shoot. There's, If you look back, there's a lot of guys in front of the net. We have a lot of guys in the box. It's a good shooting opportunity. So we should try to take that. Um, excellent work tracking back from Justin. That's a great clearance right there as opposed to some of the ones we've had. This is going to look a little sloppy, but it's pure brilliance, okay? So out and then back to keeper to encourage the double press and then out again. Absolutely genius. Owen's away. We can attack. There's nothing wrong with passing simply to invite pressure, okay? So don't be afraid to explore that. So Owen maybe giving Yannick a bit more space and maybe giving him a diagonal back would put you in a better position for both the times you touch the ball there. Mitty does an excellent job, beats his man, finds Justin on a great one. Justin does the same, completely rips a guy. Excellent ball to Noah here. So any three of you guys in that little passage should just be touch shot. Should be the first moment, first thought, okay? Or even just shot, okay? But otherwise, honestly, guys, that's... It. The last 30 seconds were probably the most, the nicest 30 that we played all game. So watch it again. Also props to Yannick for playing defender. I know he's not normally a defender. Um, it's good to just be fearless and play out of position and, and try things, right? Um, I think Willie did that early in the game too, playing defender. Like, great. Excellent. Um, Noah, you should probably roll that back to Yannick there. And the reason why is that you're trying to play forward in order for us to create a chance. If Yannick gets it there, 
and our general kind of attitude is if we get it in their half, it's touch and shot if you have the space to do that. Um, Yannick shooting would be perfect for us. That's exactly what we want. So playing the negative pass, the you know less attacking pass, is a good thing. So one thing I want to kind of bring to people's attention is that minor positioning things. So look at Colin here, right in the center of our kind of five. Minor positioning things can change just how the game plays. All of a sudden, they're able to string three, four passes together. Uh, and if you go back, and I think Colin does it again here, Colin kind of flattens out our D and makes it like a flat three, um, which again, like, okay, if the reason to make that decision is there, like we're defending a lead and we, they have two strong strikers and we need an extra body, okay, good. Um, but in a lot of cases, something like that, as opposed to man marking, will invite a lot of pressure, right? So, like, you know, somebody watching the game might be like, oh man, Colin, like you made a block, you like moved the ball around a bit, uh, great. But like the reality is, he had to make the block because he flattened out and he didn't press up high enough. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, again, like the box is, is a box for a reason, right? And the box is strong because, you know, you have bodies in front, you have bodies in behind, you have bodies on the left and bodies on the right. And that's why the box works. So you see it here, again, like Colin standing off that guy as opposed to stepping almost in front of him allows him to get the ball, I mean, we're fortunate they have to kind of dipsy-doodle to move it back. Also, akin to kind of how I was talking about counter-pressing earlier, so defend or attacking in the tight shape allows you to kind of use that box and um, kind of defend quickly. Uh, if you are defending in a certain shape, your transition to attack gets affected. So Colin being in a line now eliminates a easy ball out to the wing for us. So again, you can keep seeing it. Colin's still back there. Again, defensively, it might seem as though it's working because they haven't scored. But if Colin steps out, then we will be able to get out of our half here. And, and it's funny because the reverse is also true. So here, Colin moves out. If Colin stays in and receives, then we maybe don't give that up. But all of a sudden now we're a little slower to get back in and it's a shot on, well, almost on goal, right? Uh, I think Zach actually did get his fingers on that one. So good save, Zach. Um, and again, it comes back to percentages, right? So like the, the way you kind of like view a soccer game is like when something happens bad it's because not just one thing was done I don't want to say poorly but like not just one thing went wrong it's a, a, usually a, a bunch of little tiny things so there like Colin came out Zach kind of aired it out centrally which didn't really look like we wanted to play um, that one's much better actually uh, even better if Yannick can start wider and step into it um, but then all of a sudden now our defenders are kind of slow to get back in for that one that hit the post. If you watch it again, you'll see it. Um, and then again, like this bad thing happens. And, and conversely, when things go well, it's because multiple little things happen that work, right? So like there, like Colin's able to turn. Yannick turns, Yannick has a go. Um, and if you notice, I think our right mid was... Marcus or Justin, he's taking a taking a corner now. I forget who exactly it was, but that run was one of those little things. I think that is it might be Jackson actually or Ryan. Um, but that run that Ryan made for Yannick's shot was one of those tiny little things that was excellent. And in the moment, nobody really sees it, but it leads to Yannick being able to get that extra half foot of space, which led to a pretty damn good shot.
so there's something to be said about Marcus's touch there. Um, you have to be willing to play on your left foot to open yourself up, right? Um, like that's one where you need to you need to roll. Great save, Zach. Um, you need to let the ball roll across your body, Marcus, and then it opens you up to pass to your other. Uh, I think it was. Ryan, I guess, or Hudson, maybe? Yeah, I think it was Hudson. But um, it allows you to open up to him or to shoot on your left. So you have to be willing to use both feet. That's just another tiny little technical thing I just want to touch on very briefly. And so if you watch that one back again, um, you'll actually see the defender waits until Marcus takes that touch to commit. So he's, he's thinking, oh man, I'm, I'm kind of in trouble here. But then Marcus takes the touch and he knows that's a moment to go in. Uh, excellent press, by the way. One thing worth noting is that when they have a throw in, um, it is always a good time to press because you're a man up on the inside of the field. Uh, okay, good for a midi to let that shift to his right foot and take it on there. Like opening your body up, kind of like how we do on goal kicks. Very good. Um, but yeah, so when they have a throw in, Super good chance to just mark up and then have an extra person just roaming in the space. Just a tiny little thing. Again, like before when I mentioned kind of using like all these little things that can go right to have ultimately like, you know, create a bigger opportunity for your team. Brennan, when you get the ball there, don't roll it towards them until you are like in play and ready to play. Because if they want to take it quick, you could very easily be out of the field there. But good job roughing this guy up. His, his name's Theo, actually. He's one of the guys I used to coach. And I guess you're, you're getting back for the fact that he scored that header over top you uh, on like their first half pass of the game, so good on you. Excellent read by Midi to force them to just kind of boot the ball up. Uh, but again, here, Distribution-wise, our formation is set up so that we can find, we can use the wide areas early and then focus central onto our striker later. So Zach, we have to be able to use Carrillo into a midi there. That would have been kind of the way to make that happen because Marcus has their left fullback kind of, you know, taken care of marking-wise. Not a bad idea. Um, to actually have a player on the goal line there. And that way, now all of a sudden they've got like a weird thing to deal with, right? Because then if a midi is on the goal line, um, Brennan hits him on the head there. Uh, the ball's, if it goes over you, it's just going to be out anyway. So if you are that guy, you can just head it across the goal there. Um, I can show you this another time. And again, like with anything here, I, excellent job, midi. You absolutely you had a stellar game here. Just wanted to kind of... Like point that out. I don't think I saw much wrong with anything you did here, so good on you. Um, but again, if you guys have any questions about anything that goes on, even if, you know, if, if you're Owen and, for example, Hudson does something and you either see it or and I don't, or I make a touch on it or I comment on it and, and you know, you don't necessarily see what I'm talking about, come talk to me because like learning from each other is ultimately the best way to learn in soccer, right? That's why I try not to spend a lot of time in practices saying, okay, we're going to, you know, try to touch this way and move it this way. I mean, we do it when we have to, um, but, you know, I, I try not to, right? But yeah, come see me if you have questions. So this right here is a, is a really good buildup as well. Um, most notably through Willie. So this is a good move. Invite the pressure, like I kind of mentioned earlier. Cut in, inviting more pressure, and then out the other side. What we need to recognize here is Willie's excellent decision to go backwards, okay? And the reason he did it is because not only were there, you know, it was man on with, I believe that is Owen and uh, himself, but they had coverage in behind too. So if we could have found a way to get out on the opposite side, great. 
But that little touch backwards was just it, brilliant. And it can't be, I can't state that enough. But something like that, if we kind of know that's going to happen, we can work with it on the other side and get out the other way. This right here is really brilliant too. So out, bounce back in and go. I mean, I'm unlucky to get fouled there. If he doesn't, we've just beaten three guys with two guys, which is just outrageous. Um, here, not a big deal to take it quick. But again, that's that whole chemistry thing, just understanding how people want it. So I don't know if, first of all, if Willie knew how he wanted to get the ball in that moment, because I don't think he was expecting it to come quick. So we have to, we have to kind of, like, there needs to be an understanding of when to play people balls. So in that sort of situation, if, I believe that is Owen, or was that Noah who played that one? Or was it Yannick? I think that might have been a sub there. But anyway, if you, got, you eye contact, it's absolutely critical. If you and I, a guy have eye contact and nothing's said about it, it's, it means okay, like you can give me the ball. If he's raising his hands up, obviously he wants it more. And if he's kind of like shaking his head or like, you know, telling you to slow down, it means he doesn't want the ball. So be okay with communi communicating. Excellent save, by the way. Um, like, again, that's probably like the fifth or sixth one that Zach's had this game. Um, be okay communicating non-verbally. Um, in that position there, Willie's pass. Willie, you can keep driving to try and pull guys away from Justin and then roll the ball by. That was kind of... When I used to play 5v5 all the time, that was kind of my, my bread and butter. I would, I would drive at players and try to make it like a 1v2 against me and then find the free man. And it worked, it worked really well. So I encourage you guys to try that as well. This is nice, especially if we can get the ball back to Willie quicker. Otherwise, I think we go back and that works well too. It should be a shot here-ish. If we find Willie, this could be also a shot. That ball actually could have gone to, I believe that's Noah. If we go Noah and then Willie, then that one player that was marking both of them, he'll have to step on Noah first, and then we can actually roll to Willie. So just that little, that skip pass, sometimes really valuable. Sometimes it's actually, it kind of defeats the purpose, right? If that does happen where we do skip, then uh, Noah needs to be stepping backwards to try and get the one-time shot from a ball from Willie. But again, that's that's higher level stuff. But but I can see that because you guys are so willing to try stuff. You know, 50% of it actually comes off the way we envision it. And you guys watch this clip and you are like, okay, you know what, that's an idea for next time. Great. Like, again, this team is for trying stuff, testing things, seeing what works, getting used to the game, being able to be dominant in terms of our level of kind of aggression for our relative to our size and it's all working really well here so you know have faith in that it's, it's we're doing a great job So Zach does a, does a great job here to come out to get it. Obviously, you know, that's not what we want to have happen from it, but it's it's a starting point from where we need to grow. And obviously Zach's playing his first season for us, so I'm not going to be fussy on something like that because he's doing and he's trying to do what I want to see from our team, right? Having our, our keeper step out a bit, be part of the play, attract a defender, play the ball around that defender, excellent tackle again from Zach to, you know, bait, well, not even bait him something, but just to, just to be part of the game, right? Sometimes as a keeper, it can be very easy to just stand on your line and, like, let it all come to you, but that he's being proactive is, it, it's a great sign. Yeah. 
if you guys rewind just a little bit, uh, you'll be able to see the kind of the power of the box, okay? And so, you know, we get a half chance off of that. Ryan probably should have just been greedier, but like, you know, tried to fake the pass to Jackson, put it on his left foot and rifle it. Um, but again, like, it, it, these are just things like, indoor, it's, you either gotta be very quick and greedy, or you gotta just counterattack the other team and be quick and greedy. Like, it's, how you get your goals in indoor, it's, it's just, it's very difficult to get them from open play when the defense is kind of set up, right? Good play, unlucky to actually get a goal here. I think we should have got the corner, yeah. But again, like, good stuff. That just kind of shows the importance of having, again, a quick touch and shot, and then being, having guys in the box for rebounds and just to kind of create a mess of the area. Another good moment here. You'll probably know exactly right there what I'm about to say. Take it on your right, Colin. Have a go. So for this corner, um, just a marking thing, right? Like, Brennan gets near the one guy, Ryan gets near the guy and pushes off. I mean, I think Ryan's looking for the counter here. But just typical SR, mark your guys on corners, okay? Just get near them. You don't need to touch them. Well, yeah, you do need to touch them. Just, like, put your shoulder against them. Don't hit them. Don't push them. Don't grab them. Just put your shoulder against them. If you've ever had to win a header with somebody's shoulder two inches from your chest, it's very really difficult. So do it, please, everybody. So we need to just slow it down. If you go back, like Ryan puts the ball down, takes two steps back, and then immediately begins his run-up. Like, the thing about free kicks, throw-ins, is that you, you have now the ability to kind of control what happens and when it happens, right? And, and so that shouldn't be taken lightly. So in that sort of situation, if we're taking a free kick, it's like good to shoot. But, you know, line up your shot, think about which post you want to hit, Make sure you have numbers in the box. Like, take your time and let things develop, right? Because if if you go back and you look at that again, we've got a player in the box, we've got a player to the right of Ryan, and then we've got two players on the wings. 
if we end up using one of the wings, we don't need a player on the other wing because that should involve, or it should result in an attack happening or shot occurring within, you know, a couple seconds from using that initial pass. So if we get one out on the wing and then two inside or three inside, great. And in the position we were in there, if Ryan's back taking the kick, Carrillo can push up, right? We can get an extra in the box, put three in the box, one outside, even four in the box and, you know, the kicker back. Perfect. It'd be great. It would, it would just give us a much higher success rate in that position. So another, I mean, you see it right there, right? Like the marking. We, we get close, but then we don't really carry out our marking duties. And there's one player that actually rolled from near post to far post. And he was just wide open. We're lucky Carrillo got a foot in on that. Because otherwise that guy has basically a tap. In. Again, kind of same thing here. Carrillo does a better job there. But we should be goal side. We should be in behind their players. So, good read here, I believe, from Noah. And also, excellent job just getting it on to a foot and shooting it. Uh, the speed that he does that, really good. The closeness of the touch, really good. He uses it to fool the defender one way. Does it under pressure, very good. Um, obviously, you know, best if we get the shot lower. But, uh, you know, as we stand, it's just better if we are able to get those shots off. Uh, that little last one there, just watch the how deep we defend like that is that is a bit of an issue so very important to kind of be aware like if you look at Yannick there good tackle but he's right next to Zach for the most of it right like we have to be able to push out earlier and put more pressure on them sooner in order to kind of take pressure off our midfields so again like good I mean Carrillo was out there Yannick had to deal with the 2v1 he gets back to recover he does a really good job here actually just in general um, oh, okay, foul, sure. Brennan, the roughest player on our team. We should be walling up a lot closer, even if, even if the ref doesn't let us. Just wall up nice and close, right? Let him move you after the fact. And also, you know, we had Noah in one wall and Brennan Yannick in another wall. You know, whoever's going to be the wall guy, you get the guys on you, right? And then we'll sort everything else out as it comes. Uh, that shot right there, was that was a three-man wall, I would say, in normal situations. Um, but they had numbers forward, too, so it's just something we have to be aware of. The nice thing, though, about a three-man wall is actually you'll, you'll end up cutting off that pass a good bit because you can push Zach out a little more. And so that player now has to get wider to receive the ball. Uh, more more distribution issues. Uh, I think, like I'm, I'm speaking to this game probably 10, no, eight days after. Um, and we've, we've, we've since played two games and the Zach's distribution has gotten a lot better. So uh, that's a problem I don't foresee having in the future, but good. Good for Brennan to make sure he's on the guy. Uh, Watching his man, very good, but also you need to have an idea of where that ball is going to be too. I understand, you know, like, you were just defending on that side, but if you, like, try to do what you can to give yourself the time to get back in to, uh, into position. I think you, you did that earlier too, where you kind of gave them the ball and then you had to kind of, like, run to get back into position. Let them get the ball, you know? So they started looking pretty good here. Um, not really through any changes, but they were just able to kind of like, I think we were tired. I think they'd beaten, they were able to beat us 1v1 a few more times. Uh, like our setup there was good. Again, like it's, it's a, fu a, fu a function of just the physicality, right?
So, for that one, we do okay there. We need to recognize that if there's four of their guys on one side and two of our guys, the opportunity comes from the switch. Like, we need to figure out how to get the ball there to Noah or, you know, if Justin's drift o drifted over a bit or Brennan. But, yeah, it's just head up more, being more aware of peripherals. Other than that, it was a good game for us, especially first half.